Hi, in today's video, I would like to proudly present you my pocket edit tool that I reverse engineered in, well, probably a month worth of my spare time. So if you're into that kind of thing, stay tuned. It all started because I wanted to have a good way to actually create presets on this device. It's a fantastic budget device. For 60 US dollars, you have NUM capabilities. But the only downside was there was no PC uh, software for it. There's only an uh, Android and iOS app, and I don't like editing on touchscreen. I like using my mouse. I'm old school that way. So I started out with an uh, initial command set that I got from a guy from Sofia. I have to thank him in the credits down below. Uh, he figured out a way to influence delay settings. And he said something about brute forcing them, and that got me interested. So that's how my whole journey started. I have no background in Bluetooth or uh, reverse engineering. I just have a background in finding solutions for things that bother me. So let's jump right into the UI. This is the Pocket UI. Uh, Pocket Edit is uh, released on GitHub, so if you're interested, I'm releasing it for free for everyone to use. So as you can see, Bluetooth is enabled on my device. So all we have to do is connect to it. So which means currently you have to use a Bluetooth enabled device to connect to it. As you can see, it locks this, the, the UI and actually synchronizes the current settings. We are at the factory presets right now. We can also change to user presets. As you can see, factory presets are fixed in memory, which means you cannot change and overwrite them. And initially you start out with the user presets being copies of them. So let's say I want to switch to my UK metal profile pre preset actually. So it, as you can see, it instantly did it. And if we turn on and off noise gate, as you can see on the device, it will also turn it off. Um, also, if you change something, you will see that an asterisk appears here, which means that the current preset has been changed. So if you're changing to another preset, it will give you a warning telling you, okay, do you want to change or want to save it? I want to change my preset here. And as you can see, it synchronized the state again. If you want to make any changes, let's say um, I'm just turning off noise gate on and off and you will see it is considered a change. If you want to save it, there's a hidden button here that says save current preset. This is using brute force because there's two CRC bytes, so checksum bytes, that I found no logic to. Uh, and I have to admit, I used 99% AI Gemini Pro uh, to actually code this whole project. What happens when you click here, you will get a, a name that you can choose, I will name it the same way and save it to the same slot. You can, of course, copy it to a different slot. Let's say confirm and save. This could take up to, well, a few minutes, basically, because it depends on the speed of Bluetooth. And currently I'm experimenting with different Bluetooth devices. But as you can see right here, it did it fairly quickly. So yeah, you can go through the devices. And of course, you can also change the order of the devices. This is around 720 different possibilities because this is a fixed block. And of course you can move it behind the block, as you can see here, and it will automatically uh, adjust it on the device in real time. Um, yeah, so there's one special mode in AMP mode. There's the clone mode, which basically activates the NUM module. Uh, I had to find a way to read the user presets in here because you will change those and I have no way of knowing, so I couldn't hard code them. They were being decoded by a character map that I figured out. Also took a week, basically. Um, in clone mode, you will see that the IR is disabled. Uh, that's because the, this device actually uh, wants this to be a full capture. You don't have to use a full capture, but then you need an IR loader afterwards. The IR loader is not enabled. You cannot change any current settings here because you're in clone mode. Once you switch back to clone mode, you will see that it will update the UI and you can change any kind of IR settings here again. Also, you have five IR slots that you can fill with user presets and they're at the bottom right here. Yeah, so if you want to hear some tones and actually see that all of these actually do something, uh, I'm more than happy to show you. 
You can also search patches, which is, I think, an, a neat feature. You also have the global settings for um, input level here that you can adjust patch volume and global volume changes. Yeah, let's pick up a guitar and try playing something so you can actually see that all of these settings actually do something. Let's go to one of my current favorite uh, presets that I created. Yes, I want to change and I'm picking up my guitar. I'll be right back. I'm back again with my trusty guitar and I'm going to showcase that this is actually doing something to the sound. So this is one of my current presets that I have. <laughs> Let's say I want to change the IR. Or let's say I don't want a Tube Screamer, I want a uh, Procat the Rat. Yeah, not my favorite sound, but it's fine. Let's do some clean sounds. I want to change patches. Middle position. Let's turn on the drive. I am currently also working on a USB version for this. So if you don't have a USB uh, Bluetooth device or you, you, you don't even have internal Bluetooth, I am currently working on making a more solid USB version which will probably take me another month. I'm doing this in my free time and uh, it's just a fun project. I don't want you to uh, sign up to any kind of newsletter or donate anything or, I don't know, subscribe. Maybe you can. Um, I, I would be happy, but you don't have to. I'll link down the project that I have on GitHub and you can try it straight away yourself. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will try to debug every uh, error you can find. Uh, I'm also thinking about a new cool feature that the device doesn't have, a tap tempo, which is of course done in the UI with a, a button that you press and then it calculates how many milliseconds this is. And I'll, I'll showcase that um, when you have delay on, um, we also have values to 1000 currently. Uh, Figuring out these commands wasn't that easy. I had to use a lot of brute forcing. If you like my stuff, give me a thumbs up and maybe follow me. Thank you. Have fun.